Hello, Rick here, and I thought it would be a good idea to explain the state of the Romulan Star Empire in the year 2409 before we move on to the new chapter of Star Trek Online, the destruction of Hobus and the fracturing of the Imperial people. As a conscripted temporal agent, it's probably for the best that I brush up on recent events, after all. So, the Romulan Star Empire made its last appearance in Star Trek Nemesis, where in 2379, a coup led to a new Praetor, Shinzon, taking control. Jean-Luc Picard investigates and it all soon unravels into a ploy surrounding cloning, outlawed Thaleron weapons, and the realisation on the Romulans' part that Praetor Shinzon does not have the best interests of Romulus or Remus in mind. The Enterprise, alongside Commander Denatra of the Romulan Imperial Military, dethrones Shinzon, violently, and they go their separate ways with a tentative air of peace. This, alongside a growing reunification movement, initiated by Ambassador Spock, led many in the general Romulan public and military to begin to question the government's hostility towards the Federation. There's a lot more of the politics which I'm brushing over and will probably address in greater detail in the story series itself, but in 2387, the Hobus star goes supernova and somehow, the shockwave does not dissipate and it blazes a trail of destruction through many star systems. In all honesty, no one knew why. Everyone knew that the star was going to explode, but a supernova shouldn't be able to expand across an entire sector of space, so no one was prepared. Last minute, some of the Romulan people turned to the Vulcan Science Council for aid, but the Romulan government officially refused the Vulcans' help. Ambassador Spock set out anyway with the Red Matter Bomb to counter the supernova's effects, but in the time taken to mobilise, Romulus and Remus were destroyed. The Romulans' Star Empire's survivors began to fracture into two camps. Those that saw the Empire's isolationist attitude had cost them time, and maybe even their homeworlds, and those who wanted to bring together the scattered people and reconstruct their civilization as before. Those who wished to rebuild the Empire still call themselves the Romulan Star Empire and are led by Empress Sela, while Datun's reunificationists fled the Imperial military in stolen ships and sought the aid of both the Klingon Empire and the Federation. Both powers agreed to support the efforts of the new Romulan Republic, and in turn found themselves at odds with the Romulan Star Empire. But what's new there? In a nutshell, that's where things are at with the Romulans. Now, in preparation for the new campaign, Lieutenant Commander Mark Hale has to report back to Earth Space Dock for a debriefing regarding the whole Klingon affair. I never get tired of the Space Dock doors. We make our way in person to Admiral Quinn's office to receive our new orders. You've done excellent work so far, so I want to expand the range of your mission profiles. There are trouble spots all over the galaxy. Good Starfleet Captain never shies from engaging with trouble and trying to solve problems. Within the bounds of the Prime Directive, of course. 23rd Century Prime Directive? You'll find patrols at systems scattered all across the quadrant, where enemy ships or local problems need help. We also have trouble spots in other parts of the galaxy, such as Nimbus 3, Drozana Station, and the Defera system. Check into these kinds of trouble spots, as time permits. These are the repeatable PvE team missions that routinely crop up. Not what I'm here for right now. Congratulations! You've proven yourself to be invaluable to Starfleet and earn the respect of your fellow officers. Return to Earth Space Dock. I would like to formally recognize your contributions to the Federation. Well, I can't be that invaluable if you've forgotten that I'm standing right in front of you, Admiral. But despite that, we're officially promoted to Commander, and we gain access to a new tier of ships. Let's have a look at them, shall we? So, we have access to the Heavy Cruiser, a defensive engineering build based on the quad nacelled Cheyenne class, one variation of which is the Stargazer, so named after Picard's famous vessel which shared a similar design philosophy of four nacelles. Then we have the Tactical Heavy Escort, perfect for builds that favour a bit more of a punch, 
and one of the variations is the Akira class that saw introduction around the time of the Sovereign. Its variations all present the same low profile design. And finally a selection of research vessels based off of the Olympia ship that was commanded by Beverly Crusher in an alternate future of the Federation. Similar to the 22nd century Starfleet ships, these feature the sphere instead of a saucer, making the design almost resemble the rod of Asclepius, the winged staff symbol of the medical profession. Well I know which one I'm going to choose, but first it's time to celebrate my promotion! Shots! More shots! I'm actually from the past! I met James Kirk! So there was this time on Cestus with a Tellerite and a Gorm. Also, shots. Seriously, we're like BFFs! I am Lieutenant Commander Data, your emotions confuse me. But I have no emotions like Lieutenant Badzil. Oh god, out of the way, I'm gonna be sick. Out of the way, Commander coming through. Spocks. Alright, technically it was Scotty. But I call this move the Time Warp. Uh. Hey everybody, look at this guy! Medic. Man down. Oh. Why does my uniform smell like bathroom floor? <clears throat> okay, professional demeanor time. We have orders to see to as a respectable commander, and I hope you'll join me next time when we begin the Romulan arc of Star Trek Online and continue through this game's storyline exploring the lore of the Star Trek universe. Thanks again for watching. I've been Rick and until next time, goodbye. <laughs>